Hi, I'm Peter Molner, and this is one of a series of videos about OpenNX. In this video, I will demonstrate how to install OpenNX on macOS systems. OpenNX is actually built on X11, therefore we need to have an X server running on uh, macOS. X11 is not installed on Mac uh, until version 10.7 there was a X11 um, package on the uh, installation medium that came with the system. However, with uh, Mountain Lion, Apple actually stopped providing their own X11 system. That's not really a big deal because X Quartz is around for a long time and very stable and is um, uh, very actively updated. So in order to actually run OpenNX, the first thing we need to do is install XQuartz. XQuartz is also needed for any other type of software that runs on, for the Mac that runs on X11, for example, uh, GIMP or Inkscape and many of the other open source software packages that are actually installed for a broader Unix uh, range. Usually that's very easy. You would just find the download link, download the DMG package, and once that is downloaded, you can find it in your downloads folder, double click on the DMG file, and it should show up as a, um, a finder window. Follow the instructions from there. Once the download is completed, find your DMG file, double click on it, and it's going to unpack it and create a disk image that is mounted and should show up in your finder window. Here's the window. It has an X quartz package. Just double click on that. And this will walk you through the installation process. The OpenNX version for Mac OS X. On the download page here, yeah, you find a link for the various different operating systems. Here's the image for Open and uh, for Open and X for Mac OS X. Click on it, gets you to the SourceForge page. Usually that takes a few seconds, and then it should, um, the download should start. You get a package file here that to install. Follow the same way. It has an installer. Double click, it will run, ask you a couple of questions. This is the standard installation procedure that you would just follow uh, step by step. Once OpenNX is installed, there's a folder here um, OpenNX in your applications folder, and there are a number of different applications. There's the connection visit the OpenNX client, which we're actually going to use, the session administrator, and there is a um, script here on application to uninstall once you want to get rid of it. The first step is to create a connection. That is, if you have a host, a server that you want to connect to via NS, OpenNX, you would install the host. A menu going through. In the same menu, this is also uh, the same interface on Windows and Linux, they all look the same. So we would give our session a name. Session is kind of misleading. We're actually talking about a connection or a host. We, you can have multiple sh sessions for that, but you would not create multiple connections. So the information that is required here is the um, domain name or the name of the host, Fedora CSCLUEDU in this case. We leave this by the uh, default and I give it a different name because I think I already created that. For Unix, we have a, a number of different desktops. You might have to check with the server which of the desktops is installed. Many Linux systems have multiple servers, multiple 
desktops installed and you can actually switch. Um, you can change this later too, so you might have a um, use the session or connection to connect via KDE and at the same time you can log in uh, with any other of the um, desktops. The rest of the info uh, we just leave the, by default. And this should create a, um, a connection. So this application usually crashes at response. Um, that happened for several versions now, but it's no, really no big deal, so you can just close that. Once the connection is created, we can actually start our OpenNX application here. And there's already the system connection we had. If you create multiple connections, I actually already have a couple of things um, uh, installed here. Um, each of these are actually, well, these two are the same servers, but this is a different server. So whatever I defined here, then I can put in my uh, login just the same way I would use SSH to connect to the system. When the configure button shows you again, you can make any changes here. So the same options that you had in the connection wizard, they show up here again, and you can just change them. 422 is the standard SSH uh, port. So unless your system is different, you don't have to change that. The host name, you may select to remember the, the, host, uh, the username. And also if you use password free, SSH, then you can upload a um, your authenticated key here. You just leave that at that. Now, at this point, a window shows up and we are connected. Here's our login, and we can just use this here desktop here the same way as we can use any other desktop. This works pretty well, except the keyboard doesn't work. The configuration for each of the sessions are actually saved in a file folder dot nx slash config. Each of these nxs files represents one of the sessions that uh, were created with the connection wizard. Fortunately, they are pretty much plain text, so it's actually an XML file. And there are a few changes that have to be made in these variables that the connection wizard unfortunately gets wrong. And as a result, the keyboard doesn't work properly. So there are two entries that have to be changed concerning the keyboard. I have a working um, version of that. And to show you the difference, Fedora, this was our configuration that we just created with the, by default with the um, connection wizard. And my working function is actually this one here. And a couple of changes, the main change that you need to have here is the uh, current keyboard and custom layout. These two keys have to be changed. So they have to, the current keyboard has to be set to false and the um, custom keyboard layout should be set to empty.